Joining me now, Senator Maria Cantwell, Democrat from Washington, one of the lawmakers who staged that talkathon on the Senate floor last night to protest GOP plans to push through the health care replacement bill. Uh, Senator, thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Republicans reportedly, according to Casey Hunt there, aiming for this, this vote by the July 4th recess, uh, leaving lawmakers with maybe a week or so to review the legislation. What are you hearing from your colleagues about the timing? What are you hearing from your colleagues, if anything, about precisely what's in that bill? Well, actually, I think that Casey uh, said it best when she said there's a lot at stake here. And that's what last night was about, and that's what today is about. We don't want this to be a mystery. We want to understand the policies they're proposing. My sense of it is they want to have a war on Medicaid, which would be devastating to communities and to individuals, and it would end up raising everybody's rates, and we don't want to see that. But our colleagues are not forthcoming yet as to when we will see that. And last night I said, well, at least come to the floor and talk about the various ideas that you have. If you have ideas about how you're going to either reduce costs, increase access, or deliver better quality care, come and let's discuss them. But no one has shown up to talk about those things, and the American public should be worried about this being done in secret. This is what uh, Senator Corker, uh, this is what he said about the bill this morning. Take a listen. Have you seen the, the Republican health care bill? I have not. Are you have you? I have, have you? not. I think we have an all senators meeting, all Republican senators meeting tomorrow to begin talking about it a little bit more deeply. I would have liked, as you already know, for this to be a more open process and to have committee hearings, but that's not what we're doing. Senator Cantwell, who's, who's actually, to your knowledge, who's working on this legislation? Um, I think my colleague from Hawaii called it uh, 12 or 13 dudes. I think is what he said last night on the Senate floor. I don't know of any women who are in the room, um, but you know, this isn't about having a country club health care bill. This is about an open process. And the notion that people would want to cut Medicaid after the president promised that he would not cut Medicare or Medicaid, and now to try to cut those programs that are helping stabilize but access how do you to know, healthcare. How do you know that's the plan? If we don't, if we don't know the plan. Well, we know that's what the House plan okay. is, and we have Fair heard enough. rumors that the Senate bill is about 80 percent of the House bill, and people are talking about maybe pushing out the timeline by which they would cut Medicaid. Also, not a good idea. So there are reforms to healthcare that will save dollars, and we should pursue those. But cutting people off of access to health care is just going to raise everybody's rates again. You and your, your fellow Democrats staged this, this talk-a-thon of sorts last night, not a filibuster, uh, trying to delay all business until Republicans open up health care talks. In the end, besides these kinds of stunts, assuming that there aren't more than two Republican defections, what else can Democrats actually do to stop Republicans from approving this health care bill? What we're trying to do is get the ideas discussed in broad daylight. Why? Because if these individual members, constituents, know what their member might be voting on, then they would weigh in and encourage their members not to do something so devastating to our economy. But if they do it in, cert in secret and then bring it up at the last minute, there is no opportunity for constituents to weigh in. So what we're trying to do, what we're trying to discuss is get out there with the ideas. If you think you have better ideas on health care, regardless of what's in the bill, come discuss them. Come have the debate right now and we'll, we'll debate you because we know right now there are ways to improve access, reduce costs, and improve quality. And that's what we want to do. So this is not about secrets. This is about a public policy that affects millions of Americans and will affect our economy. And we better get it right. Here's what President Trump said uh, just a short time ago about the death of American student Otto Warmbier. It's a total disgrace what happened to Otto. That should never, ever be allowed to happen. And frankly, if he were brought home sooner, I think the result would have been a lot different. He should have been brought home that same day. The result would have been a lot different. What should our response be? Well, my sympathies are with his family in Cincinnati. I can't imagine what they're going through, having lost their son.
As somebody who fought hard for the return of one of my citizens, a gentleman named Kenneth Bay from Linwood, Washington, we worked for a long period of time to get him out of North Korea. I think it's time for us to think about actual licensing groups, whether they can go to North Korea or not. The notion that this is not the only incident of U.S. citizens being held and detained. I think we obviously want humanitarian work to continue in North Korea, but I think we need to think hard about making it safer for our citizens perhaps, who do travel there. Perhaps a complete ban on all travel to North Korea, that's something that we should entertain? Well, I think because I said humanitarian aid is still going on there, right. I think a license process might be a better path. But clearly, this is not the only incident of this, and I think it's something we need to take into account now on a new policy. Senator Cantwell, Maria Cantwell from Washington. Senator, thank you. Thank you.